Cheat Code, Support Strategist, by My Head in the Clouds Not Coming Down, read by Rat Overlord. Chapter 49, Anchor. Summary, Uraraka finds a new way to practice and the Eye Island crew is hard at work. Ochako had never been so grateful to be tired. Apparently, the trip to High Island and back had burned through all the energy from her week of repressing one for all, so it was taking her longer to recover than it had when she had first started teleporting, which she would normally have found really frustrating, but right now, she was just relieved. If she was tired, then that limited how far she could warp, and it seemed like the only person who was in the radius at the moment was Shinso. So, the farthest she'd ended up in the past day was only a block from the agency. It was a nice change of pace. Being grounded also meant that she could actually focus on the quirkless sparring techniques that Gunhead was teaching them. They were fun, but she could also see how they were going to be useful in their fights. Her match against Bakugo would have been much easier with these skills under her belt. They just finished the last spar of the day when Gunhead clapped his hands to get their attention. All right, everybody, we're going to do something a little different for our cooldown today. We're going to play a game of hide-and-seek with our very own Uravity. Ochako blinked in confusion as everyone turned to look at her. Uh, what? Hide-and-go-seek, Gunhead repeated, grinning. You use your quirk on us all the time, so you can use everyone as anchors. Then we'll spread out throughout the agency and you can try and get as close to your target as possible. It'll be a nice way for the boys to wind down after a long day of training. And it'll be good quirk training for you. So, it's a win-win. Plus, it's fun. I mean, he does have a point. Shinso said. You'll be able to focus on accuracy without exhausting yourself or throwing up again, since the jumps will be pretty short. That's a good point, Ochako said thoughtfully. It's not going to help me stay put, though, is it? Uh, no. Gunhead grimaced apologetically. But at your current energy level, it looks like you're confined to the city, right? So we don't have to worry about you going too far away. Only until she gets her energy back up, Shinso pointed out. Then it's off to wherever the whims of fate take her. Well, then your goal is to control fate, so then at least you know where you're going. Gunhead gave him a big thumbs up. I believe in you! Well, you already control gravity. Shinso shrugged. So why not? Shouldn't be too bad, right? Ochako clenched her fist in determination. All right, let's do this! Isuku sighed. No, Mei-chan, you can't make Uraraka get gauges. Ugh, but it'll be so much easier to fit the tech in! Mei groaned. No, it's okay. I'm Mei Hatsume. I can do this! Yeah. Gages might not fit her marketing image very well either, Melissa agreed. But we've already managed to make the sensing tech almost three times smaller, so we're making progress. May glared at her. That's not special when the original tech is the size of a room! May, just go explode something already, Isuku said, turning back to his computer. You'll feel better, I promise. All right, fine! May scooped up an armful of suspicious items off the table and stomped off to one of the testing rooms, which started giving off muffled booms within seconds of her going in. She always was a fast worker. It's cute how you always seem to know what she needs, Melissa said and gave him a sly smile. I wish I had a boyfriend like that. Isuku almost deleted an entire paragraph of code as he jumped and almost slammed his hands into the keyboard. I, I, I already told you, we're not dating or anything. We're just good friends. Melissa laughed. I'm just messing with you, Midoriya. Don't worry. But still, the relationship that you two do have, even if it's just a friendship, just seems so special. We inventors can be intimidating sometimes, so having someone around who can encourage our weirdness and give us permission to go make things explode sometimes, it's rare. But it can make all the difference in the world to us, especially when projects get frustrating. I just think it's sweet that you're willing to be that person for her. Isuka shrugged and got back to work. It's not that special. I mean, it's no more than what she does for me. People find my analysis creepy, but Mei-chan just thinks it's cool. 
and she's really one of the only people I've ever met to really support me and thinks that I can do everything, so honestly, I'm just returning the favor. Melissa frowned sympathetically. Mm, bullies? Yeah. Isiku nodded. But I mean, I wanted to be a hero as a kid, so obviously people weren't going to support that. Why not? Melissa asked. She looked genuinely confused, and Isuku realized with a start that she probably didn't know. Quirks weren't that important in support internships, after all. His first instinct was always to hide it. He could just come up with an excuse about being a crybaby or something, but his inner maid was screaming at him to just stop being such a coward and get it over with. Eventually, he decided to compromise between the two. If she really wanted to know, she could always ask more questions. Well, quirk stuff. What's your quirk, if you don't mind me asking? Melissa said. When Dad showed me your file, the quirk section was just blank. Uncle Might is kind of like that too, so I was wondering if it was confidential or something. Like I said, it might be a rude question, so you don't have to tell me or anything. I was just curious. Isuka swallowed. Uh, no, uh, it's not confidential, just non-existent? Melissa's eyes widened. Oh. Isiku nodded, his mouth dry. Yeah, uh, quirkless heroes don't really exist, though, so I had to find another dream. Me too, Melissa said. I wanted to be a hero, too. I mean, what kid doesn't, right? But, uh, after Dad got my x-rays back and he realized that my quirk wasn't just late, Uncle Might encouraged me to follow my dad's example and go into support. Isiku stopped and stared at her. You're quirkless too? Melissa smiled sadly. Yep, certifiably part of the less evolved. Whoa. Isiku sat back in his chair. I guess we all end up in support then, huh? Melissa shrugged. If you can't join them, help them, right? Isiku chuckled. <laughs> right. It's just so frustrating though sometimes, because like... I know quirks, and sometimes I'll see people and think, oh, they could be so much more powerful if they just did things this way. I mean, sometimes I just want to say, okay, give it here and let me do it, you know? Melissa laughed. I thought it was the only one. It's just so frustrating. I'll make an item for somebody, but they can't really test it because using technology to imitate a quirk can only get you so far. And then, of course, they refuse to use it because they think relying on the quirk is enough, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> you get it! Isika tore at his hair. It's just so frustrating! And then, of course, they have the audacity to look at you and tell you that you don't know what you're talking about just because you can't change your eye color. It's like they think being quirkless is a mental disability, not a physical one. <laughs> they really do, though. Melissa made a face. I had this one teacher in elementary school that tried to put me in remedial classes, even though I was at the top of my grade in academics. Oof. Isuka grimaced. That sucks. Melissa nodded seriously. Yep, it was ridiculous. Thankfully, though, I went crying to Dad, and he pulled me out the next day. He didn't stand for anyone treating me like I was less than anyone else just because I was quirkless. I wish my mom was like that. Isuka's eyes widened and he hurried to explain. Uh, not, not that she was bad or anything. She did her best, you know? Like, I, I know that. It's just that she trusts the teachers sometimes, you know? Especially near the beginning. It didn't help that she always just thought I was weaker than everyone else. I mean, I get it. My best friend as a toddler has an insane quirk, so she probably was just comparing me to him, but I had a teacher who wouldn't let me even play outside during recess because I'd break, and she didn't even think to question it. Wow. <whistles> Melissa gave a low whistle. Yeah, I guess wanting to be a hero wouldn't really be the easiest thing for her to swallow. Isuku shrugged. At least she supports my analysis. It keeps me away from fights-ish. So yeah, I get to save people, and she gets to stop worrying about whether or not I'm safe. We both win. They worked in silence for a few seconds, listening to May's explosions through the wall, before Melissa spoke up again. Are you glad you changed your mind and picked support instead? Isuku nodded. <laughs> yeah, if I hadn't, I would never have met Mei-chan or done any of the amazing things that I've been able to do. 
it's fulfilling and I'm able to be successful and even respected. That never would have happened if I'd still been chasing after an impossible dream. Melissa nodded and she looked like she was about to say something else when the door to the testing room slammed open and May came out, covered head to toe in soot. I figured it out! We just need to vaporize everything that's unnecessary! Back to work! Isuku smiled and shook his head fondly, rolling his eyes when Melissa shot him a knowing smile. They may just be friends, but he was beyond lucky to have a friend like her. Everyone in position? Hitoshi said. You ready? Uraraka scrunched her nose in frustration. No, I'm probably not going to be able to find any of them. It's just going to be so embarrassing. Yep. Hitoshi nodded. Sure will. Uraraka glared at him. Gee, thanks, Shindig. I'm glad to have your undying support. You're welcome. He gave her a shit-eating grin. <laughs> but hey, now all you have to do is prove me wrong. She kept her glare up for as long as she could before bursting into a fit of laughter. <laughs> this is going to be terrible. Who should I even try and find first? Mm, Gunhead, maybe? Hitoshi shrugged. I mean, it is his agency, so... The app Isiku had sent him beeped, and Hitoshi blinked as he watched Uraraka disappear. When she was actually trying to jump, the process was a little bit slower than when she did it by accident, and he couldn't keep his jaw from dropping at what he saw. It only lasted a split second, but for the tiny moment after Uraraka had activated her quirk and before she'd worked to wherever she was thinking of, it was like the entire energy of the universe had lit up around her. He didn't know if it was because she was messing with space and gravity, or if it was just something about her quirk, but it was one of the most beautiful sights he'd ever seen. Uraraka was surrounded by Aurora Borealis. As always, I hope you enjoyed listening, as I love making these, and if you did, feel free to leave a like or comment down below, and make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with whenever I post. And as always, your little daily reminder to hydrate, not dehydrate, and to love yourself.